this video is an introduction to z-scores. So whenever you see me make a video that's called intro to something, it means there's a lot of information to know. And this is just, hey, here's what it is. And here's a little bit to know about it. And later in the course, we're going to discover a lot more detail about it. So if you are not in my class and you've just stumbled across this video, this is not the video for you. That I'm not going to go through how to find all of the different probabilities to the left and to the right. All I'm doing is finding a z-score and talking about what it is. So what is a z-score? Uh, a z-score, which you'll sometimes see referred to as a standard score, tells us how far a value is from the mean by computing how many standard deviations it is from the mean. So this is key, how many standard deviations it is away from the mean. That's what a z-score tell us. It tells us the number of standard deviations to the left or right of the mean. So the z-score for a population and for a sample is essentially going to be determined in the same way. We've talked about this uh, notation a little bit in previous lessons. Remember that when we're dealing with a population, all of the uh, parameters, because population goes with parameter, are always going to be Greek letters. And that's why we have mu here and we have sigma here for the population parameters. So this is the population mean and this is the population standard deviation. The Z is just going to represent our standard score or Z score. And the X is the observed value or the value that we're testing. Now for a sample value instead of a population, we're just going to use lowercase letters for those same statistics. Remember population parameter, sample statistic. So X bar is the sample mean and S is the sample standard deviation. But it's really the same thing. So you're going to hear me say observed minus expected over the standard deviation a lot. You're probably going to get really sick of it, so sorry about it. But that's because it works all the time. What's the observed value? What's the expected value? And this is what's expected. We expect the mean, whether it is a sample mean or a population mean, and then the standard deviation, which could be the population or the sample. So let's take a look at how to calculate a z-score. Remember, to calculate a z-score, we're taking the observed minus expected over the standard deviation, which might be expected could be mu, or it could be x bar, and standard deviation, oops, that looks like a minus sign, so let's not do that. Standard deviation could either be that sigma value or S, depending on if it is a population or a sample. Really, it doesn't matter if it's a population or a sample because it's going to be calculated the same way. The mean score on the math section of the SAT is 500. That's this value. Mean is expected, 500. Standard deviation is 150 points. Obviously, that's this value. What is the standard score? That's what's Z. For a student who scored 630, 630 is my observed value, the value that I'm testing. So if mu is 500, sigma is 150, value of interest is 630, all I'm going to do is plug the values in. And the only thing you have to watch out for when you are calculating a z-score, the only error that I see students make, well, two errors. One error is quite often students will switch these around. Um, so don't be that student, because remember, these values are always the values that are given with either the sample or the population. The mistake that I see a lot of people make is they plug this into their calculator as 630 minus 500 divided by 150. And I know we've talked about this error before. 
remember that your calculator or Excel or any other thing that you're using to calculate this is going to do this part first because order of operations says multiplication division happens before subtraction. So just make sure that you're using parentheses when you plug it into your calculator. So what does this mean? Well, this tells us that the student's math SAT score of 630 is approximately 0.87 standard deviations above the mean. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a visual person. So let's remember how we did the empirical rule. Remember, when we did the empirical rule, we said the mean is in the middle. And then we use the standard deviation to go up 150 because that's standard deviation. So that's 650 and up 150 more than that would be 800 and then 950. And then to the left, I'm going to subtract 150. So that's 350, 250. Now, this is what we expect. We expect 500. This student scored 630. That's somewhere over here, 630. Now, why am I showing you a picture? Because you're going to see this picture over and over and over, and I want you to understand what it means. We just found a z-score. Let me tell you what a z-score does. A z-score standardizes it so that a z-score of 0 is in the middle, and a z-score of 1 is the same as a raw score of 650. So it's one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, negative one, negative two, negative three. So what we just found, which was 0.87, if you'll notice, happened in here, which is between 0 and 1. And so essentially it's saying it's 0.87 standard deviations above the mean. Let's now use Excel to verify our result. And you can do this one of two different ways. You can either choose specific cells to represent x, mu, and sigma, and then set up a function to find the z-score for you. So let me show you that way first. Here we had an x value of 630, a mu value of 500, and a sigma value of 150. And if I wanted to just use Excel as a calculator, I would set up equals and then basically just type the formula. So the formula says that I have to take x minus mu, and notice I'm putting those in parentheses because I want that to be calculated first, and then I'm going to divide it by sigma. And we can see that our z-score is exactly like what we found by hand. And that's fine. It's completely perfect to do it that way. Um, you can also use standardize. So I can use, whoops, equals standardize. And then I can either type in x, which is 630, mean or mu, which is 500, and standard deviation, which is 150. Or again, I can use those entry cells to use standardize and then point it to these cells. And then, of course, the advantage to pointing it to the cells instead, oops, I think I have an extra parenthesis. The advantage to pointing to the cells instead is if I have several questions where say they're asking now for the z-score at 332, all I have to do is change the x and notice this automatically adjusted and this automatically adjusted, whereas this one didn't because I actually put in the values myself. So I would have to go in there and type in 332 to get the same value. So again, standardize, easy way to do it. Um, or simply use Excel as a calculator. Let's take another look now at a question where we're comparing using z-scores. So we have Jody and Ashley who are taking a calculus test and we wanna see who did better comparatively speaking. 
meaning obviously Jody got an 87 and Ashley got an 82, but we all know we have those teachers who grade a little bit tougher. And so we want to know in relation to the rest of their own classes, um, which one did better. So let's take a look. We have Jody and we have Ashley. And I'm going to use the standardize function. So standardize. And then in this case, Jody scored an 87, but her class had a mean of 80 with a standard deviation of five. So her score is 1.4. Now, just so that we understand exactly what it is uh, that a Z score is telling us, it's telling us at the normal model where zero is the mean, Jody scored 1.4 standard deviations better than the mean. So she did well, she did better than average, 1.4 standard deviations above the mean. Let's take a look now at Ashley and see how she did. So Ashley has a different mean, so we're still going to use standardize, and now I'm going to use my X of 82 because that was her score, but her mean, notice, is 73, whereas the other um, class had a mean of 80 and her standard deviation is six, and so she actually is 1.5 above the mean. So again, because they had different means and they had different standard deviations, even though Jody scored an 87, which was better than the 82 that Ashley scored, Ashley did better um, comparatively speaking. As I said at the beginning of this video, we have just barely scratched the surface of z-scores and how we will use them, but it is a great introduction um, and we will get more into depth later in this course. Up next, however, we're going to take a little detour into probability. So the next several chapters, um, they will get increasingly harder, but the very next video is an intro video, again, intro to probability. So it's just going to be the basics of probability.